Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 40. Why it's now easier to stalk people, and why ants make awesome engineers. Enjoy the show. Welcome to Let's Talk Geek, episode 40. Uh, no titles yet, uh, but we'll do that at the end. Uh, we have Yumf Melem with us tonight. Uh, you can get to him on at Exor, E-X-X-O-R. Um, and of course, he writes for my broadband. That I do. Cool. And we'll also have Stuart Allen uh, at Stu underscore Z-A. Mm-hmm. And myself, Tim Hawk, at Tim underscore Hawk. Let's Hello. get to the show. Yeah. Cool. You're still writing for Staff Writer. Mm. So if people don't like what they say, they know where to find you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not the only staff writer, but but I, I am occasionally staff yeah, no, writer. No, we know you write all the staff writers. <laughs> I've actually the topic now. What, what, what we what we actually wanted to do, and I've actually got the AOK. We just need to. We just need, so the idea is is a go. We just have to get these printed. Mm-hmm. Is a staff is a staff writer shirt. <laughs> a okay. Shirt that says I am the, the staff, staff writer. writer with a my broadband logo on it, <laughs> and then <laughs> another one that says I am the staff writer, and then in brackets small underneath it, and pig spotter. And Batman. That is cool. And the stick. And, and the, the stick. stick. You know, you come on, you've got to be the stick as well. <laughs> yeah, while we're at it. <laughs> cool. Ah, uh, cool. All right. Um, dump no, some RC. I read dump them. Okay. There's no major happenings except for the triple five stuff. Yeah. Check it out. Triple yeah, five Yeah, you, you've submitted your, your I stuff did. apparently. Hope they. that's good enough. Cool. <laughs> oh, it should be. Yeah, the, I ran out of time a bit, so... Oh, did yeah. you did you, uh, did you uh, put both in? Yeah, no, I put both in, but it's reused projects. So it's stuff I've already done before. So it's not, I didn't go out and develop something. I wanted to do that balancing stick thing. Mm-hmm. But I see lots of guys are doing balancing robots and stuff. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, do something. I built it, but it's, I'm not going to submit it. It's Why not? No, because everyone's done it, man. It's all over the place. Okay. Yeah, all right. so it looked cool and it worked, but yeah. All right, okay, well, we'll get into our show. Um, quick tip from Stu here. If you're buying a monitor, yeah, buy it now. Do it now. Why? Because uh, budget speech, they've now, uh, they're now they going to put a 7% import duty on um, monitors because they say they're being used as TVs to well, get around the TV license. Posh. No, but it's, it's not really getting around the TV license. No, no, it is. no, no it's not getting around it's not getting the TV license. It's the, the TV tax. So in other words, all TVs in the country, which is odd because I can get a, t- a 32-inch TV in this country for way cheaper than I can get a 32-inch monitor. Oh, yeah, way cheaper. Yes. Way, way, so way so cheaper. I don't understand what this tax is doing exactly because apparently yeah. TVs get taxed out the yin-yang in this country already. And so now all that's going to happen is that normal computer monitors are going to be taxed yeah. Um, with the same ad valorem, but not necessarily the, the, the same uh, import duty. The, the, the guys at, uh, at Mustech explained yeah. sort of like very in, in very brief. We're just waiting for more comprehensive comment from them. But essentially TVs have, an, have a, like huge, like a 20-25% import duty when it hits the country. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then you add your transport costs, blah, 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 all your costs of sales. And then, that? Uh, then you've got a 7% ad valorem on top of that. Oh, okay. So, and that's, that then adds oh. to your whole cost of your TV, right? So, so um, it, it's got to be the mass production of the TVs that keeps the costs down uh, as yeah. opposed to monitors. But now, you know, you've got monitors which are already more expensive than TVs to begin with, getting the same ad valorem tax as TVs. Well, whatever you do, just make sure you get a monitor before April 1st. Yes. And the whole thing is uh, most other computers do not get taxed. No, other components don't. Well, yeah. import tax, eh? Yes. You still pay your VAT and all the other Oh, yes, yeah, you, you pay all that. But you you, the pay, import you tax, pay, you don't pay, pay. Tax, yeah. uh, to help s- stimulate the economy. But anyway, it's, and it's not going to be an April 1st joke. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if they noticed that, <laughs> that all the new tax laws are now going to be applied on April 1st. Well, good thing, though. What if they noticed that? <laughs> I, I doubt it. I don't think I've got such a sense of humor. No, when it comes to money, I don't Good think. news, though. Did you see they've delayed the implementation of the... Uh, I've got a conspiracy starting. theory about that. Do tell. So, do you, I, okay. I don't really want to get too political here. But you know why, hey? You, you heard about the WikiLeaks article that they leaked a, they leaked a cable uh, from the U.S. consulate saying that the ANC is very worried about losing the Pretoria area to the DA. Oh, no, no, no. Okay, and now, all of a sudden, they're now stopping this uh, 
massive you know road taxes yeah. and road yeah. tolls which the which which all the unions are going to get involved in that right before uh, nas- uh, before local elections well you see that was mine never mind the conspiracy <laughs> or Victoria anything just before national le- no, elections that's what i'm saying you, it's, you, it would be yeah. it would be political suicide if they probably kept it open so it's not going to make me vote for them but once again, no no but that's what i'm saying i don't want to get too political and yeah. that but i'm just saying watch we're after the national, after the local elections, the all of a now. sudden it's going to be instead of sixty-five cents, it's going to be around sixty-five a kilometer. No, <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, I look sixty-five cents a bit much. I still think. Anyway, we're not going to get we'll, into we'll, that. We'll topic talk again. about toll roads a little bit later on. All right. Yeah. Okay. Well, have any of you guys ever wanted to stalk anyone? No. No, neither have I. <laughs> I said yes. I mean, come on. You want to look at me funny? No. Oh, we look at you funny anyway, Stu. <laughs> Uh, well, stalking just got a bit easy on Facebook. <laughs> some guy's written some plugin uh, where you can, uh, or app or whatever they call it on Facebook, where you can actually watch for when people get single. This is so cool. I think it's brilliant. So, you know, if you're wanting to like date someone or check, <laughs> it just sits in the background and then prompts you once to become single. Yeah, they send you an email and says, so-and-so has just become single. Get to it. <laughs> Reminds me of a How Met Your Mother episode. Yes, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> well, The just, window is open. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> No, um, man, it's, I think it's cool. Well, like somebody says, it stops the, imagine boredom, where the guy's checking in on all these people all the time and, and you know, feeling yeah. bad that the person's still... Yeah, I don't think it's going to... Stalking, come on. Why would you stalk someone when they're single? If you're going to stalk, you're going to stalk. Yeah, but you're stalking them already. It's make... You see, you're stalking you're them while they... the big boyfriend. That's not why. single. <laughs> or the other way around. Just yeah. get of the big golf... No, okay. We'll just leave, <laughs> leave that stupid. Okay. Uh, that's All right. Good. Okay. It's just something that I've been waiting for, for for a long time. Google apparently is pushing Gingerbread to the Nexus 1. Yes, finally. Apparently. apparently because no one has it yet. How do you mean no one has it yet? Well, you go on the was, forums. Yeah. Um, because as soon as, it, as soon as it's been released to one person, you get the update on zip. So then you can install it on your phone. I was on the forums over lunchtime today. Mm-hmm. No one. There isn't one. So everyone's oh okay, has anybody got it? No, no, I haven't got it. Have you got it yet? No. Maybe it's like that maybe it's like, you know, in Guatemala or something. It could be. Or or just the people who have it don't know how to get the updates up and generate it. Guatemala, dude. I'm telling you. I'm, I'm <laughs> sure in Guatemala. I'm sure they have, the they have fairly newbie users in the in the US. Yeah. But I'm, I wonder if Google does that. They like profile their user base. And they go, these guys wouldn't know how to rip a, <laughs> rip well, a ROM I, I off would, a device. I would say you actually want to do it the other way around. You want those guys that will rip it and find all the bugs, but actually won't care as much to get it first. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Uh, they can, we, we, if you do brick their phones, they c- can fix it. Yeah, I don't know. So, okay, so the story is that it is getting pushed out. Keep an eye out for it because it will be coming at some point in time. Now, this has got abs- this has got nothing to. Okay, but you can't buy it on a Vodacom contract. Okay, fine. It doesn't make s- it, the, the the network operators in South Africa got no say whether you're going to get the updates or not. No, is no. it an over the air update? Yes, it is okay. an over the air update. Um, but there's the, there's that Google for it. There's actually a code that you can type and then forces your phone to check. Okay, cool. Um, so as soon as it is available for your phone, it will come. Well, through. speaking of updates, the Kindle got updated last night. Okay. Yeah, so, yeah, so you've got page well, numbers. So Neat. Yeah, I've been running the beta on mine and it's been fine. Okay. I actually can't even upgrade on mine. It's oh, the, okay. the, the beta is that version now. Oh, all right. So there's no ver- There's not even a build number change. Uh, was there anything else besides page numbers that there was cool? There was a couple of things. It was page numbers and some other nonsense. Cool, the page numbers I can understand. No, no, the page numbers are cool. Oh, cool, yeah. No, I can agree with you there, but I'm just saying there's nothing really more interesting. It's amazing how much news w- was actually given to this update and all it does is give you... No, it gives you four things. Pay, uh, page no, it numbers. gives you four things. Uh. But oh, it's it? evil. Kindle's evil. Why? I, Any more evil I, than Apple? Dude, I had to. I had to create a special folder in my email just for all the Kindle, ma- just for all the Amazon mail from me buying damn books. I, mean, I also get <laughs> spam. You look. No, you no, look- I get spam. I'm buying the damn book. Ooh, oh, that's only five ninety nine. Oh, buy. Oh, that's only six ninety nine. Okay. Buy. Ninety nine cents. I gotta have it. <laughs> buy. Okay, I'm not that bad yet. No, dude, I've got like th- I've got like thirty books on it at the moment. And this is why the app store is so successful, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you know, it's suckers yeah, like me. <laughs> in other news, uh, which I wanted to add, have you seen with the app store this thirty percent on all in in app purchases that they want to do? Well, subscriptions, isn't it? Or is any it in- any in app? Which which which? Interesting. Uh, Store, sorry. So this is Apple. The Apple. Okay, Apple. but isn't that sort of uh, in line with what they charge for apps anyway? So yes. in other words, they, they take 30% of your, your total app sales, so shouldn't they take 30% of everything else you do? Otherwise, it's sort of a loophole. 
you, you, you ship an app for a dollar and then you go, okay, everybody, now in order to get the full access to this app, pay me $20. Then you circumvent Apple's whole... For certain things, except for certain subscription things. So let's say now you want to buy music, okay? Um, you now need to pay 30% as the music retailer to Apple. Now, who's your biggest competitor selling music? Yeah. No, Apple. Fair enough. And do they pay themselves 30% of the music? No, of course not. No. Because, they're, yeah, but they're already, yeah, but they're already taking, they're, they're taking a fair share. They'll probably take around that from the, from the distributor of the music as well. So, yeah, I guess there's a way. But, I mean, we know that Apple isn't going to allow... I mean, it, you know, people are like Google is nice for, for letting other folks onto their platform yeah. already. Um, but, of course, Google doesn't, isn't that nice because they don't let you advertise your app store in their market. Yeah. So, I mean... Um, what I was going to say... Oh, have you seen quite a few of the, 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 uh, the Google App Store apps? Yeah. They've got uh, where you can donate out of the app. You can download it off the... Um, oh, yes. Yeah, I've seen a lot you, of But they've got their own donation page and everything yeah. like that. I see quite Google, a few of them. Google don't. It. And Google's <laughs> going to be implementing their own system, because, uh, which is 10%. On. Now, I don't... Why don't we... Come on. Is there any rumors? Why do we not have paid apps in South Africa? There are a couple. Um, yeah, but apparently, it, we are supposed to be getting it. Yeah, are working on it. Yeah, they I mean, are working, been on, working it. on it for flipping ever. I know, and and the only thing I can think of is is that it's a legal quagmire. Yeah, um, I can understand the gaming issue because games. You, well, we know it's an issue with games. Yeah, with, because of the rating system. Yeah, yeah, and and we. Sorry. What about? Oh, sorry. She's so not speaking to the mic. Yeah, no. Uh, okay, sorry. cool. Um, um, so yeah, no, and, and and that's I don't know if you've got uh, other things to add. Maybe you should go first, and then I'll. I'll add what I've got, but it's not much. I mean, there's not much. Oh, no, no. I, I just stage. know during the Google uh, Developer Day that they had, they did say that they are working on it. Basically, it's yeah. it's not them that's stopping it. They just, it's obviously some payment system or something like that that they're going to. The, the thing is, dude, they are one. Okay, I'm not going to go there. It's going to get political again. Yeah, but, but <laughs> I'm I mean, just going to keep my mouth shut. Yeah, we, we, the thing is, I mean, and this is the interesting thing, and this is, this is not what I don't get because this is the argument we've had around the office because now one of my colleagues has actually pursued the story and he's had far more success than I've had. Like I contacted the Foreman Publications Board last year sometime, yeah. you know, and gone, you know, blah, 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 and how come Steam can sell but nobody else can, yeah. you know, kind of thing. I mean, Steam pretty much just ignores all our regulations in this country and just sells to us, right? Yes. And yes. technically it's illegal. Yeah, but who cares a crap? Well, they don't. <laughs> Val, Val the doesn't. Thing. But if the company is has a presence in South Africa, which Microsoft does, yeah. which Sony does, which, which Google does, which Google does, or well, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a marketing arm, but I mean, still. No, they're busy pushing out. Yeah, they're they're actually doing developer sides. And, and, all and, and, and the fact is they still have a presence here, a presence yes. that can be sued or no, taken no, to court enough. or whatever. Yeah. Um, so Valve just doesn't. No. <laughs> so bonus to them. Uh, anyway, we won't get into the political side of the government. Dude, it's one bribe away. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I don't want to be nasty. But come on. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. Anyway, just, just more with the problem with the Apple one yes. is that if you sell it in store, you can't sell it cheaper anywhere else. So it's a binding, that's a, a part of the agreement. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> But you can't sell it anywhere else either. No, but let's say you've got a web subscription. Angry Birds. Yeah, but you can't. You, you, you sell a magazine. Yes. Okay, okay fair Now, enough. you've got an online web subscription. Uh, so, it, and it I've rolls got a, over into the real world as well. Yes. That's oh, a wow. That's draconian. Welcome to Apple. Yeah, I know, but still. <laughs> but I mean, and that's and, a bit I have a problem And with. multi-platform games as well is what I'm thinking of. Like, if yes. you've got Angry Birds and now you want to ship it in a, in a retail box and, and sell it to PC gamers. So, you have to sell it at, what, $1.99 $1. or yes. something? Yes. I just yeah, it, someone will fight that. Oh, they will fight that. Um, fight and it's it. more for the subscription. I think like that because it actually sells a different app. Yeah, no. um, but if there's a subscription for extra levels, and you have like a, a like that a PC version, and and if they work the same way, they have to be at the same. But uh, this could get interesting because they um, the 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 pricing tiers on the different platforms work differently. If you look at Xbox Live, mm, yeah. you know, for for DLC pricing and all that stuff. Um, if there's no subscription model necessarily, but uh, there might be DLC, then that, that could get quite interesting. Could, quite this platform demands that, uh, like PSN or whatever. But, that, but um, they all seem to do, because I know uh, 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 not Amazon was also doing, if you want to sell books and stuff, that you, you're not allowed to sell it cheaper somewhere else. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, cool. All right. <laughs> Into something a bit more interesting. Yes. Uh, Multi-touch for Linux. Finally, yeah. yeah. Only Finally. problem is I can't use it. It's you can. Yep, you gotta you gotta have an Alps touchpad or a uh, Mac 
touchpad and then you can support multi-touch i see the <clears throat> didn't we have multi-touch from the mac touchpad on ubuntu for quite some time yes this is proper multi-touch gestures okay proper pinch and zoom and okay your window manager has to support it but the um the drivers are now there to you know to so you can program gestures okay so you can say um it's quite easy to script that three finger swipe uh says change desktop yeah, and things like that. I thought you could do that in Ubuntu already. Like it no. was one of the big. big <laughs> there were some basic things, things you can do. This is the correct way. It's okay. To do it. Yeah, it's supported by EV Dev. Uh, sorry, EV, EV Dev or EV Dev. EV Dev in uh, the Xorg server, and it's um, supported by this thing called uh, Touch Egg, mm-hmm. which is like a user space configuration Neat. program. Also, the other one, I don't know if you ever tried to do it. You've got to hack some weird config files in the middle of nowhere. And yeah, it can get pretty. Well, tricky. this one it looks like a single config file. It's designed for the multi-touch. It's quite simple. In, it was yeah. quite a simple config. So it's a lot easier, and which means eventually we're going to see nice GUI interfaces for it soon, and all the rest. Yeah, of it. it's cool. Yeah, very yeah. cool. Play it's with about it. time. Play with it. Um, yeah, I'd like to actually see what the Linux guys eventually do with it. Yeah, because be generally they come up with some very interesting. It's just it's just the what you call it. Uh, the Windows Manager needs to support, and the widget set needs to support like pinch zoom. Yeah. Uh, or your app needs to support it. And I well, know Qt has got some stuff in there, but it's not it's not ubiquitous at the moment. Yes. But you can do something else with it. You know, you can do the three fingers, you can scroll left, right. Oh, yes. No, of course. And it's, and it's pretty simple to have a pinch zoom, you know, trigger the control mouse wheel action. Yes. Yeah. And you can simulate it uh, without a problem. Or but you do zoom. Or you use, you, basically, you'll just simulate keystrokes. That's the easiest yes, way of doing yeah. it. Uh, there's ways to do it. But it's not natively supported by the widget set. Mm. But I have a feeling with uh, uh, Ubuntu busy wanting to bring out phones at some point. Oh, yeah, I know. In the next version, they're going to have all that support in there. Talking about Canonical, um, I see they've actually released... uh, I don't know if you put this in, Stu? Yes, I put it in. Uh, Opens up their catalog for Linux-friendly. Yeah, so it's all Linux-friendly components. So it's hardware Hardware. that has got Linux support. Neat. Uh, You can search it. It's... uh, it's their certification catalog and all the manufacturers, all the pieces of hardware, and they'll even tell you what machine it was tested on and what version of Ubuntu, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it's, it's a good thing if you want to buy hardware for a Linux machine. Yeah. You can check it out and see, okay, that graphics card supported or the sound card or if you've got some ARB 3D mouse thing, well, cool, it's not supported or it is. So. Yeah. And do they keep that? Relatively up to date, like yeah. quickly, because no, 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 like if a new printer is launched, yes, it's up to date. Yeah. That's the Could, big thing. Because this was, was used internally. Oh, in-house. okay. Now, right. This is where it comes from. It's the in house, uh, like their QA. Q, yeah. yeah. Q- no, that's pretty cool. Because I know there was the hardware testing thing, but it was never very up to date or accurate. Mm. No, this is um, kind of like Wine. Wine also has like a, a thing for, I mean, it's not hardware, but it's still. You one know, HQ. Yeah, one HQ and testing. That's up to date. Yeah, yeah it's, it's relatively up to date. Yeah. Um, but I mean, if there's nobody with an interest in a particular game, it's not listed. Exactly. True. That's the thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the programs are um, things that the community has access to and stuff. I mean, I found some ARB programs for work and I want to run it in Wine and, well. Good luck. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, this is this Have you tried crossover at all? Hey? Have you checked crossover? Uh, wine works better. Okay. Yeah. I, I just like crossover for most things. I found wine works a little bit better, but okay. It's, all right. I'm just trying to find here if they've got a, when was it last updated? But anyway, they've actually got, I mean, they've got, you know, like if you look here, Intel Corporation's got 450 pieces of hardware that they've cataloged and rated and all the rest. So Yeah, yeah. that's going to be graphics cards, CPUs. Yep, Every so it's, nine yards. there we go. S series, uh, 400 series chipset, high definition oh, audio. Chipsets, yeah, neat. The chipsets, the HD audio controllers, the SATA controllers. I uh, imagine also they've got it. laptop models. Uh, not, not that big. I think they do, like Dell. Let's have a look yeah. at Dell. Well, they've got like the Bluetooth modules. Mm. So oh, okay, so they do actually buy modules and then the, the keyboards, the hub, the USB hubs supported. Okay, okay. So, this, this oh, so they do it on the component level. They do it on the component. And this is components, not systems. At right. All. So if you're buying a laptop, just double go check the specs, compare it, and see. Mm. And well, the reason I ask is because we got this Lexmark printer to test, um, which is which is quite cool. It's it's. Uh, uh, I know the Lexmark has a bit of a reputation, but, um, you know, and we didn't get to test it for long, so we don't know how much longevity this, <laughs> this printer has, but it looks yeah. sexy. Um, so yeah. Well, Lexmark seem to have been putting some effort into their printers recently. Yeah, so anyway, it's just, it's just 
black printer that stands about this size, stands yeah. on the desk, and it's got a scanner that flips open this way. Okay. So you, know, you can't really fit a thick book in there or anything, I think. But I mean, like a big, we, we had the Guinness Book of Records there to test with. <laughs> okay, and right. So yeah, that fit. Uh, more or less because you can hang it over the edge and stuff but okay. like a thick small book one really a scanner sort of the inverse it's, it scans it, it, it scans rather than being flat it's, it's upright so okay. yeah. anyway so flat sheets of paper they, they statically just stick to the surface alright um, but yeah books and stuff does it have a sheet struggles. feeder uh, for scanner, yeah. yeah, no, sorry. So one thing I've re- I won't buy a scanner that doesn't have a sheet, sheet feeder. Oh, it's brilliant. Yeah, exactly. It's lovely. You just like turn and go. Okay, scan <laughs> and you go away. Yeah. Anyway, what's cool about this printer is it came with an Ubuntu driver and it has a Fedora driver and it has a oh, Debian. Very cycle. great. Yeah. Props to them. Yeah. So it doesn't. I mean, there's some funkiness with um, with admin rights. Yes. It doesn't get GK Su right. Completely or something okay. like a little bit of hacking. Uh, the, yeah, it doesn't actually use it. They they use a, their own little Java. That's what they do. They use their own little Java th- <laughs> pop up that comes up, and then uh, you type your password. And we we use special characters in our in our Sue passwords, obviously, and uh, and then they don't work. Like the special characters aren't recognized. Okay, properly. so it doesn't have. It's uh, got some sort of other keyboard mm. behind it. I think. Or, or what or happens? Like I've, I've I've had problems or surpassing you go then you find they're actually passing out commands yeah and it has they don't have the escaped characters, characters. Escaped. Oh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, on the yeah. command Correct. line it's thinking those are spiritual characters yeah. and yeah, of course it's a password it. field so we can't see yes. what the hell it's yeah. typing but yeah you know, anyway. oh but that's cool I, I found the the samsung printer that i bought also yeah linux drivers on the disk neat and it also it, it, that was cool actually um it the printer scanner worked literally install it and the damn thing just worked well, i know we bought a brother and it was supported out by ubuntu out the box yeah, didn't but even was need that, to. Was that officially though, or was it just a third party? I didn't even bother to look at the. It, it, it worked. It worked. I, I plugged it in. It, the sheet feeder scan, you know, scanning, yeah. printing, faxing, everything out the box was supported. Yeah, the, this was the Samsung was quite good as well. It installed all the PPD files correctly and installed the the scanner interface correctly. But if you actually <laughs> you probe the printer a little bit, it's Linux running on the printer. Oh, it's, is it's, it? It's okay. Cups. <laughs> <laughs> cool if you poke it hard enough you can actually get it to spit out some information and it's it's definitely cups cool. running on the printer <laughs> cool all right and the next one is we're not sure whether this is a is a real story or not it's basically se- i'm calling bs on urban it. sequence i also think it's i it's think it's bs but it's fun it's cool and i, I want it to be true to tell about it while we busy um, with and it. basically it's some guys in in the pictures you, you see them you know you get the overhead cameras that are checking for uh your license, license plate. plates and they put a basically a SQL injection string at the front of the car so as the camera is going over it's picking up this thing doing character or in the thing character recognition and which then it pumps into its database <laughs> and this is his, like delete database <laughs> in, in the string um, it's just cool I, I want it to work it's fun um, yeah there's something, something to test uh, yeah on our little uh, tolling system yeah <laughs> Do you think the, the thing is? I know a lot of these things are just designed to do character recognition, but are they. Well, you know, if it is feeding that, if it's feeding that license plate into a select select whatever from field. Yeah. Yes. If they don't, if they don't do a proper parameter checking. Yes. Well, why not? Well, I'm running. Mord, will it, will OCR it? is hard though, uh, on, especially when you're coming past it at 120 an hour. So. Yes, but the, that's the thing. Apparently, a lot of the problem with the OCR is our number plates in this country. We, we don't, like, we put images behind them. Like, apparently, I had a guy, he, he spent, like, ages at Varsity's Varsity Project doing number. He got all the number plates right, and then the free state went and put that, that milli at the back of it, and it <laughs> stuffed up his entire project. <laughs> but nice. I, th- I think this is cool. Uh, the only problem is I'm, te- I'm pretty sure that, that it will not be able to, it will not pass that whole string. Yeah, yeah exactly. Also, I think they're going to limit the size. Gonna st- I think they'll limit this, yeah. Yeah. unless it's crap software. You and I wouldn't put it past them. <laughs> I, I, I just saying. I want to test this. It could be fun. Anyway, what I was saying as well is at DefCon 14, right? There's uh, there was a there was a talk by um, a guy called Major Malfunction. All right, and he did a lot of uh, IR hacking in hotel rooms and stuff, and safe cracking and things like that. But one thing he was messing with was um, Magstrap. Yeah, and he was playing around with his Magstrap of his airline ticket. And okay. he put a, he he just checks you know there's the there's his seat number and all the yeah, rest on yeah. it so he's like well I'm gonna bump myself up to first class and he swiped it through and the 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 thing rejected it obviously that the the ticket obviously 
what's on the mag stripe on the ticket doesn't match their record. So there was obviously an issue. There. Yes, it, it, yes, it, it does. Take that. So that maybe there was some checksum or something. Also, I don't know if you know, there's a barcode at the front. Yes, no, but this was this was what he did. Was he? They swapped it. It failed. They typed it in by hand, and then they let him through. So yeah. it was cool. Then he he tried putting SQL injection statements in the um in like the the seat number, you know. Also, drop the ta- drop the database and things like that. <laughs> didn't work. Like. Did, did not work. No, it didn't work. Yeah, I it's think good I th- to know though. It's good to know. I would I would send an alert like the the first the first client who tries that stuff. I'm going to be like. Flag this guy, all right. <laughs> the problem is with a lot of these things, there's so many places you can input. If you put alerts into all that, they're monitoring all <laughs> odd. All you want to do is basically make it so it becomes through as a string and you you know, you check and you say, okay, okay just it's invalid. Invalid and they type it in by hand. That's yeah. where they were doing it. Also, you know, what you test for? Because I'm sure some of these do go corrupt. Yes. So do you, every time you have an invalid entry, you, you flag? No, no, yeah. no. But uh, one cool thing was <laughs> he, did a, he did a safe cracking thing. And um, he got onto the, the, the website of the safe that, so he, he, in his hotel room, he took one of these electronic keypad safes, right? Went onto the website and got the manufacturer's details and everything. And they said it was a rated to 30 minutes or something like that. So it will take an, an, a safe cracker 30 minutes to get into it. And he says, man, they on the, on the thing was watch this video. And he takes his beer, puts it in the safe, closes it, puts his, uh, punches in the code, and lo- it locks, right? So it takes a screwdriver, cracks the front case open, shorts a few wires, clink, safe opens. I think it took him less than 10 seconds to open it. That's shocking. Man. <laughs> but it shows you also depends when was it rated. No, this, no, no, no. This was a supposedly quite a reputable manufacturer of safes. Oh, and a new one. Yeah, it's a brand oh, new okay, safe. All right, okay. Because I know <laughs> some, some safes even have like a master key. Like you call a locksmith. Yeah, and, like, and he's got the master key for the safe. No, like, no, I mean, like some secret code, you know, like these secret USB yes, yes. yeah. codes we've got on, on, on Android devices. Boop, boop, boop. Opens the safe. And this guy can break into anybody's house with that safe and get what he but wants. But it was quite Which funny. means, yeah, since the uh, criminals will never have those. Have <laughs> <laughs> no, a locksmith is never a bad guy. Yeah. Yeah. Ever, ever. And they no never speak locksmith. to anyone. And, and, you know, the information that they get, I'm sure they just get a pamphlet sent to them. There's it's nobody like magicians, who dude. tend to be a locksmith. It's like magicians. You know, they're never supposed to re- re- uh, reveal their secrets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but if you get a chance, have a look at some of his talks. Major malfunction. It was quite, it was quite fun. Cool, cool. All right, now on to the next one. Ants make awesome network engineers, apparently. Yeah, this is, I don't know why this is new. Um, I think this is specifically the specific uh, neural networks, uh, network ACOs. and shortest yeah, part and they optimization, in. ACO. Um, they have found previously that they do do sh- very good shortest path. You know Bell, not Bell, uh, Br- BT, British Telecoms, yeah. in like the 90s, did this. Used ACO to, to, to try to optimize cell phone, uh, so, uh, sorry, telephone call routing. Okay. Um, though with this one, it's just the specific optimization it's doing. No, it's fair something, enough. Uh, it's St- Steiner tree optimization, yes. which is not initially just shortest path; it's shortest intersections. So you've got shared paths yes. uh, from you know, multiple paths coming into a single point, and finding the best one for that. Oh, it's still interesting, though. Did mm. you read it, though? Yes, I did. Okay, tell us about it. Because I'm sorry, I didn't get time. No, no, it was basically. <laughs> and it, it all boils down to. They do Steiner tree optimization. Okay. And Steiner tree, from what I can gather, and this is my reading through it. I did read through it. Don't understand it that much. But it's, it's got to do with point intersections. So let's say you've got well, yeah, triangle is the best one. So you've got three points. Yes. The center of the triangle, you know, equilateral triangle, your, 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 would be your Steiner tree optimization because that would be your quickest, shortest point. Okay. Then you get with, uh, now if you've got two points, Four paths or four points you're starting with. Yeah, it's basically optimizing so that and you with that one it meets in two points and then becomes a central line between okay. the two of them. So it's not just what is the shortest point path between point A and B. Is I've got two part parts that I'm starting from and I'm getting to two different other parts. Path. You know how do I optimize that? Okay. Um, did, did they base this off a specific species of yes, ant? Yes, uh, it's it? an Argentinian ant. Okay. Why? Because they're the ones that do it. Okay. The others don't. They've got other optimizations. So what makes them special? 
why do they ants do it? Because I mean, normally you drop pheromones and the pheromone no, trails. No, ant colony and optimization. optimization. So yes. why are they? Why are these ants special? What makes them special? I think it's it's the specific path or the optimization that they do. Okay, so they didn't really go into much details about how they actually ants do it. No, they just okay. said it's this one specific colony of ants in Argentina Tina. that do this, and it's, it was a specific optimization as opposed to the other ones, which is just I've got to get from here to there. Yeah, What's shortest the path. Route? Yeah. yeah. This one actually does it for from multiple points to multiple points. Okay, which is your network if you actually think about it. You know, we, yes, we, yeah, we, no. we go into our ISPs and shorten that. And all but this is all this is network design, not really real time network optimization. No, no, no. This is not uh, going through a huge network. This would be more before you build a huge network. Well, possibly if you think on on the work, you might actually want to use this in your BGP or whatever to make your decisions. Okay. Um. To to. Yeah, I actually wouldn't know where you'd use it. <laughs> it must be in, in real life. Yeah, so, okay. Um, yeah, I see we are actually a bit quiet tonight. I don't know. Is everybody else here, just life is horrendously hectic at the moment. Yeah, yeah I don't know. What madness. is up with it? This year started at the same pace as last year ended, and I thought I couldn't take it anymore. Oh, so it's, it's, yeah, last year ended, I was just, I could wait for December. It, uh, it was. I've, I've just come back from a short holiday. I mean, like I... Oh, yes, I was going to ask you, you in... UK also not just for holiday but also yeah, for yeah. work I, I went there for work and, and then the, the, the guys who organised the trip kindly um, made my return trip a bit later yeah, so okay. I could stay on like a couple of well a day and a half to be precise <laughs> okay um, yeah two, two and a half days something like that anyway so um, yeah so I got to see London first time in London oh uh, very cool yeah visited some friends up there and cool what and were stuff. you there for work Norton wise? launched a yeah here you go some exposure and this doesn't get put in the KPIs damn it um, and uh Anyway, they launched the Cybercrime Index. Okay. Um, they also, I don't know if you saw the article, I did it and I got major flack for it. Um, there's, a, there's a company called Passmark. It's, uh, they, they, do, they did a comparison really s- very similar to what you can get on AV, I think it's avcomparison.org or something. Okay, yeah. Um, and uh, basically what they did was they took a, a pool of antiviruses, including some free ones like Avast. Yes. But excluding some other ones like Panda. And and ran a, a battery of tests on them, seventeen dimensions. Okay. I, I'm not going to list them all. I didn't even list them all in the <laughs> article because it's just severely boring. Okay. And um, and Norton's 360 came out on top for oh. for total for total. Um, Norton paid um, for the report. Okay. And they provided some of the scripts. So just full disclosure yeah, right, right up front. Okay. But my, I mean, my question is that they also measure the load that that puts on your PC. Yes, they measured they measured the scan, they measured the memory, they just uh, um, idle time memory load, all that stuff because the you know Norton Norton conceded. They stood up there in front of us and said, "Listen, we know we we have a bad rep, but we've been working on this for 3 years." So yeah. to try and to try Look, and fix I, our performance I had it issues. End of beginning of last year actually. My brother's he, he paid paid versions paid for the upgrade mm-hmm. saw the upgrade something went wrong with the upgrade it didn't install the other the old version correctly stored the new version and then bombed out every time it booted his PC it tried to reinstall it had to reformat yeah 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 and he's not the only person this yeah, is so yeah. yeah, no, but that's not performance. That's 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 just suckiness in general in the installation yeah, unfortunately, procedure. Unfortunately, with antivirus, that they make, they're mucking around with the really operating system, and yeah, you know, if something yeah, goes wrong, I'm bad things with happen. With Norton, I, I've just had yeah, I've personally had bad experiences, so bad experiences. Well. Yeah. especially the performance. No, absolutely, and lots of people have had bad experiences. What's interesting is is to have my own suspicions confirmed that McAfee is actually really slow. And and I and I've experienced that firsthand. McAfee is just really slow. Mm. Um, there were some other ones I wish they tested, so I could have those suspicions confirmed that are even <laughs> slower. I mean, McAfee isn't the slowest by okay. far, but um, I you, found it to be. What quite do they say about uh, what's it? AVG? Because I've been finding that's been slow and slow as well. Yeah, it has been getting slower, and the, the report reflects that. Um, some weird service that kicks in the background just makes your hard drive go all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let me let me actually call up this article, and then um, while I'm searching for it, we can just talk no, about. We're using Nod32 at work. Uh, I've migrated now. The new one, I'm using the Windows antivirus. Yeah, I believe that's not terrible. It's not. And no. it actually doesn't kill your system. I was talking to a friend of mine and he was that he was saying is, it's not awful. No. Well, with a lot of these things, you just want one that's re- good enough. I think Microsoft, you know, because it's, it's their product, I think they can maybe speak to the other guys and get some secret, uber secret hardware hooks or you know, uh, kernel hooks or something to yeah. make it run faster. Yeah. Yeah. Like they were doing with, with what's it, Office, eh? <laughs> that we're dealing with Office and also with something of speaking to Office I can't remember that hooked into hooks inside, inside Office that nothing else could could yes 
Oh, sorry, I got it wrong. They did test Panda, uh, and it came out. It came out at about the same. They, they they've got they had three categories. They had um, total sort of total security solution, which uh, they only had five uh, yeah, packages yeah. for: uh, Norton, Kaspersky, McAfee, Trend Micro. Bitdefender. Then they had internet security, and those I didn't even list in my article. Um, and then they had antivirus. Um, so the the internet security, I just did a quickie on who came out on top because there, there were like three that were close together, and then the rest were very far behind. But what was interesting in, in the antivirus is to see that Avast, which the f- a free edition of Avast, was five points behind Norton. So Norton didn't beat them by much, and Norton is insanely more expensive than free. Yes. Um, so, yeah, anyway, and so uh, Nod32 is there, ESET. Um, AVG ranks just under ESET in fifth place. Yeah, fifth place. Um, and that's, but that's the paid version. Okay. Then the free version ranks two places below that, under GData, but by this much. Um, yeah, and then McAfee further down. Microsoft Security Essentials ranked slower than McAfee for an antivirus. Yeah. Yeah. So and and this isn't just I mean this isn't just scan speed or anything like this. Yes, it's this a is whole also metrics. what they pick 17 up. dimensions. So yeah. to say it's slower, I mean you really have to look at the 17 dimensions to see who mm-hmm. came out on top in what you know okay. who uses the least amount of memory, who scans the fastest, who lets you copy files the fastest. So quite quite yeah. interesting. Yeah. Who lets you download the fastest? Look through that at some point when yeah, I've got well. free time. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, you just go to Passmark and they've got a report okay, in PDF cool. format. All right. Well, anyway, from that to what's it? Freaking lasers. <laughs> yeah. I remember that was our first show or something. We had that in it. Um, some guys have made an anti laser. Uh, sounds awesome. Yeah, I want, it's I want not really. <laughs> it's not, it's, it's not interesting. Really. It's clever. When I first did it, I thought it was like a laser beam that would like nullify of another laser. Particles, yeah. Or some, you know, it's, it sounds like, but it's not. It's just, it's a medium. So it's going to be, you could feel like a piece of glass or a, a, a man made yeah. medium. Um, that when the laser shines through that, it will. Attenuate the laser so it won't shine out the other side. And it's not some guys. Some guys at Yale. Okay, some guys <laughs> at Yale. Well, it's always some guys at yeah, some I'm trying to think of where I would use that. I mean, it's, it's a cool safety Optical feature. Optical switches yeah. and things like that. that. It's not going to be some super-duper anti-laser uh, <laughs> coating you can paint on your ballistic missiles. No, it's it's you could use it in like optical switches or you know I mean high speed. Well, I, I suppose you put could it on put a tank it armor so your laser guided missiles can't. No, it, because it, you got to dissipate the energy. It doesn't yeah. cancel out the laser. What it, it does is it absorbs it turns it. it into heat. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So you still have to if you if you hit it with a ten gigawatt laser, well, you have to dissipate ten gigawatts, which you're not going to. Yeah. Okay, but I'm pretty sure those yeah. those the, 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 the spotters don't paint a t- tank with. No, 10 they don't. Gigawatt but laser. It will stop a spotter. <laughs> yeah, it might, but it, it's because it won't. You won't get the reflection. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking, and we'll I don't look. I, I'm yes. not. I don't want to profess. I know how laser guided missiles work. I haven't looked into the newer technology in quite some time. I mean, who the hell? Well, well, like something in the slash dot article, one of the guys says, "Well, if you really want to, like in this case, make your your plane so it can't be affected by the laser, put a mirror." Yes, <laughs> you know whatever free, whatever power laser they send at you, send it right back at them. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> cover it with what's it? Uh, f- what's it? Not Fresnel lenses. His friends? No, no, not Fresnel lenses. What's it? Man, reflector lenses with the the corners. Yeah, what are those called. I have no idea. Oh, flip it, man. Anyway, it's, oh, retro reflectors. Um, so you know, retro reflectors. That any ang- any light coming at any angle will be returned at exactly the same angle. Yeah, but I'm sure if these things exist, why not put it on your tank? Yeah, but this is not what it's designed for. Oh, okay. um, and as soon as it gets a bit of dirt, isn't it really expensive for your tank to get blown up with a crew inside? Yeah, but like prohibitively expensive, and you're going to have the guys polishing it all the time. Oh, okay. So you get a bit of dirt. So what you're going to have is new version. You're going to have like a, a little uh, mortar that <laughs> sends out some mud, splatters it, and then you paint it. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, <laughs> it, it's a it's 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 it's, interesting. it's never would be never used for that. It's more of a um, an instrument for. For yeah, it's going to be a medical for. They'll say they was say medical for anti stuff. tumor, but I'm not really sure how that was. I'm not and and optical sure switches are actually quite interesting to, yeah. to get all optical networks going and all optical computing. Yes, and things like that. So no, that's, is, that's still a ways away. But yeah, but I that's mean, this is the kind of technology they've been saying they could see it being used in those applications. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but it's an interesting, it's an it interesting, interesting concept. Talking about this, we, uh, the next one with another laser was uh, U.S. Navy breaks laser record. Yes. Uh, and Stu, you were telling us that this is yeah, sort of... Uh, it's, it's, I don't know. I couldn't find the... Sorry, I'm, I'm going to not say what I've read about it because 
I couldn't find the reference. So, okay. but anyway, tell us about it, Tim. It's it is quite cool. I haven't read this one. I haven't read oh, well, fine. I'll tell you about. It. Okay, so what it is is the new the new hundred kilowatt uh, laser that they are going to be using on board ships, and it is now. You know, it has, they've shot it at a block of steel and it can cut through 20 feet of steel per second. Cool. What's that in an actual measuring system? Uh, no. 20 feet divided by three. <laughs> yeah, divided by three. So I'm you're sure. talking about, what, uh, uh, seven, eight me- seven meters or something. Let's ask Google. Yes. Just, just under seven meters a second. Just, yeah. Just over. Crack. Six meters. Six. Oh, there we go. Six yeah. meters of steel in a second. That's pretty cool. That's but, quite a lot of steel, yeah. Yeah, the, the, the one thing I, I, I can't, I'll find the exact answer, but the problem is it didn't seem to be that it was 20 feet of steel. They seem to have extrapolated it that if the laser could run for one second, it would cut through 20 oh, feet. Oh, right. It's, it's, normally, it's the <laughs> amount of energy you need to yeah. pump out, and to produce that quantity of energy is very hard. And it's a relative, it's 100 kilowatt. So anyway, what it is, what they wanted to use it for is for anti-missile defense for ships and things yeah, like ships that. But if you can mount a giant power plant on yeah, that oh, That's thing, the thing. So. I mean, you've got a nuclear reactor. You've got plenty of power. And I mean, so, if, yeah. if you're going to mount rail guns on ships, uh, that's why not a laser defense system? Exactly. So, yeah. Um, the biggest thing with using it in real world is uh, focusing the beam in you know, turbulent air. Because um, you, you remember the, 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 the air can actually become a lens of some kind. Of oh no, it is. I mean, if you ever, if you ever been out, if you ever stood at the beach and look out at sea when it's a bit windy, it's hazy as anything. Yeah, mm. that is just. Or, or like an example, they say is you know when you see the sun setting, it's actually reset. What you're actually seeing is actually the the sun is actually below the horizon already, and the way as it shines through the air, it bends it over. Stu says thinks I'm lying. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to check up on that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, Sorry what I'm saying wiki. is that's, there's problems with using lasers. Yeah. Also, if you don't have line of sight to the target, you need clear line of sight. That's so you can't necessarily use it to shoot other ships because at the moment you can use a cannon or cruise missiles or something or you know, long-range missiles and you can hit ships over the horizon. Well, it might be nice can't though, with a laser. A, as a defense mechanism. That's what I was saying. It's, yeah. It would be for uh, anti, anti-missile and anti-aircraft. Defense, cool. but yes, it is quite cool. Hundred kilowatt lasers, cool. Into the next one, um, Skynet is here. I see some of the guys are apparently they're busy trying to make uh, satellites that can think for themselves. I looked at this; it's it's actually a bit of a the heading is very misleading. It's, it's, <laughs> is basically it's, they're they're letting the satellites underst- understand human readable yes human language. So this. Which we ties in a bit with Watson, the guy, the, that computer they have. Oh yeah, we should have spoken Jeopardy. about Watson. We'll speak about Watson we'll, after we'll the speak, satellites we'll speak quickly. Anyway, mm. um, so they can read their own manuals effectively and work out how to tune themselves or move themselves, maneuver away from obstacles yeah. and things like that. So, um, but it's it's effectively it's a control system. Yeah, I, and it sounds like it's just it's just a highly evolved scripting language. Yes. Yeah. It's a control system that can have a bit more feedback. It, but I don't know if I trust it. Tr- billion yeah. dollar satellite would you really let it maneuver itself yes if you've tested oh, it yeah, thoroughly you've tested uh, you're very, test- very very and, thoroughly. and that's my thing is you'd rather have people to blame <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> well, this article seems to be more about that it can read human language than yeah. it can control okay. itself because yeah. it can really control themselves they can yes, really see but intelligently things. Well, they can really intelligently do it. Mm. They can see um, something flying at them and move themselves. Some of them are being designed for that. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Sorry. Moving I, I along. Watson. Watson. Uh, this was a computer at IBM, I think. IBM. Uh, Jeopardy. Jeopardy. Can play Jeopardy. Can play Jeopardy. We uh, spoke about it. When was it? Like a few shows ago? Yeah. But when they were still doing the testing. Yeah, yes. yeah. And now they've actually had the show. And it wasn't be- kicked ass. Wiped the humans. <laughs> yeah, just. I think he ended up seventy seven thousand dollars to twenty five thousand. He, he owned. just just destroyed them. Yeah, and and this is what, just based on like a body of general knowledge that it somehow obtained. It, it couldn't be connected to the internet during the show, so okay. it had to have generated uh, its own databases beforehand. It was connected to the internet during the database generation. Yes, and it basically builds up massive, massive. Uh, graphs of correlations so it can associate it you know it, it associates one thing if you look they were speaking about they said 
It asked, it didn't know where Toronto was. It said it was in America. It said it was in North America, but it didn't actually say it was in Canada. And it got the, that was one of the questions it got wrong. And why it did that is because of its the way it does associations. Um, so they, it was way the, the way the question was worded worked out that it actually it is so it knew we, it knew where toronto was but the way the question was asked placed it in north america not in canada interesting just i mean there's a couple of there's a couple of systems at play here um so firstly is it like normal old trebec is it trebec um, yeah, I don't know who, who does it. Uh, yeah, anyway, anyway yeah. he speaks, and then the, the machine actually does no. a, a voice-to-text no, conversion? No, it doesn't, it doesn't okay. do voice-to-text. So what they give it is they give it the question. Okay. So basically, it would be a text representation of the yes. question. All right. And I'm not sure when do they, when they actually give it the question. I, in the I point think in reading they, the, 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 the... Because some humans as well, you're not even done phrasing the question. The human would... They're not allowed to. Oh, really? In, in, Jeopardy, in Jeopardy, you have to. In Jeopardy, they have to finish the question. Yeah. And you have to press the buzzer after the question has been answered. I think they give Otherwise, it, they kick you out. Okay. You, lo- you can't answer that round. Can't answer the round. I think they give it to it at the beginning, but it also can't answer till the end of the question. No, no, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it also has... So it does get a slight head start. But w- as a person, as soon as you start hearing the question, you already start processing it. Yes. So... Where they say this is... The main thing with this is actually it's understanding the, the question and how the question is context. I mean, this is really yeah. one step away from... You know, you, you know the, the, that age-old experiment and, and, the, and the old story of the guy who sits chatting to a bot... Oh, yes. Turing effect. In the Turing test. Yeah, the Turing, Turing test. test, exactly. So, I mean, this is one step away well, from, the, from you, it's, the thing an is, intelligence the that you can converse with. This would actually with. make it fail because it would answer the questions too often. It would be too smart. I guess. <laughs> I guess, but, but it might be... They're uh, actually going to make some of... They've actually learned with some of these bots for the Turing test that they do. They've got to actually make them a bit yeah, stupid. See, that's the thing. It's factual. This was designed to answer factual questions. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so so th- it's more of a computational engine yeah. but one cool or a knowledge, a knowledge base yeah, than yeah. anything the cool, else. It's, the, the, the cool, it's like a really good expert system in, in yeah, yeah, yeah. general knowledge. The thing is, uh, voice recognition at the moment is reasonably good. To go from text to speech, uh, sorry, speech to text is reasonably good. Yes. It's the comprehension of what you're actually mm. typing is the problem. So this is yeah. where it comes in. This so is quite interesting. Yeah, and I, know, I don't know if you saw the, the, article, uh, the article, Gary Kasparov yes, he had chimed some, in on this. Yeah, yeah. But, but he's got a bone to pick with IBM after the whole deep, of deep, blue. Deep, deep blue incident. So right. I don't know if you saw no. know about this at all. Anyway, um, Gary Kasparov is a chess master. Yes, yeah. And Grand he master. was... Sorry, mm, grandmaster, <laughs> flipping out. You don't want to. You don't want to call a professor yeah, exactly. a doctor. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. He's a grandmaster. Anyway, and yeah, he's he's a, he's a grandmaster. And um, he basically, I don't know who challenged whom, but basically he ended up playing Deep Blue, uh, yes, which is yeah. IBM's chess playing computer. Yeah, yeah. And the first time round, he he beat it. I don't. I, I don't want to go as far as to say he wiped the floor with it, but he beat Deep Blue and he beat it. He, convincingly. Yeah, convincingly. And the second time around, there was a rematch, and he lost a, 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 a match of six games. And he lost badly. And he lost badly to this machine. But it was, it, it was contentious. Apparently, he stormed out, and he came back and said that IBM cheated. Um, there was another grandmaster who worked for IBM who helped train Deep Blue. And he says he knows how Deep Blue thinks. And so he made a move that a normal human would be able, should be able to recognize as a dumb move, right? But it's, it's a move that tricks the computer. And all of a sudden, the computer made a human move. And he says that the, the, the other grandmaster was feeding deep yeah. blue moves. And he demanded a rematch and he never got it. 1997. <laughs> so it's all, very con- it's all very contentious, this whole deep blue uh, thing with old Gary Kasparov. So he's got a bit of an axe to grind. Yeah, I don't know. So what I mentioned with this thing is you, you feed it all the program, all the past chess games that that yeah, person's it, played. It, it does a few things. Uh, it did brute force. A lot of brute force moves. Mm. That's how Gary Kasparov won in the first place was tricking it. Yeah. Uh, basically decoys and dummy moves and think, it, that's how he beat it. Thinking like a human, not like a computer. And at that stage, you just couldn't plan the game tree far enough. But things have changed since then. Yeah, nowadays so, you could. Yeah. Also, I know I've got a friend who plays quite a bit of chess, and he says they also program in oh, yes. past games. No, no, they, they've got they've got catalogs of all the chess games at competition level ever played since like the 1600s or something. Yeah. And they feed every single game into the computer, and it learns every single opening and closing moves. And this moves is how, this is how chess grandmasters do what they do as well. Yes. yes, no. I mean, you don't learn out but, of your own mistakes. Exactly. Yeah. Apparently, yeah, you get beginning games, middle games, and end games. And some guys are good at what 
if we, you know, the Grand Moss is good at one of the three or two of well, ah, yeah. whatever. It is, I don't know yeah. about chess, but but yeah, it's it's interesting. But uh, Watson was quite good fun to watch. I must. I didn't you, watch it. So go go no, check on YouTube. There's lots of videos. I, I've had it. zero free time in the past. It's quite, oh, it's quite fun. Oh. He's fa- it's fast, eh? It's so fast, and it's 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 scarily human. <laughs> scarily That's cool. human, no. But this is it's a natural language processing. So yeah. it's like I'm sure you guys will have it with Google. You've got to phrase your questions in such a way you get the answer you yes. want. Mm. Now if they combine these two, you'll ask the question, but by how you phrase it like to a human, it will know what no. you mean. And Google is getting better at it with the whole how do I or how to or mm. Well, is it that Google's getting better? Because it's all the thing about the these link farms and, yeah, the and farms. I guess search is, engine is optimization is getting better phrasing their headings and stuff to how you're asking it yeah. yeah yeah i see they've got some speaking of link forms have you seen some of the new tools that google have released for anti-link farming there's a chrome plugin yeah i did see um, that where you, that can, you can say you i can, don't want to get these people again you don't want to get these and they link and you can you submit your results it's a beta program that you have to upload your your dislikes you, you say that's a link form i don't like these um these reviews uh, these yeah. results, results and it sends it back to their to their systems and you'll never see those results again. And it's also they're trying to build up a database of what is a link farm, how do you just how do you categorize it, and how can they feed people like that, and not like, and, yeah. and how can they feed that into a model that they can apply to their search results? Yeah. I mean, uh, sorry, I'm just I'm just using because this is always fun. Like it, it might actually be fun to do articles of one day. Um, is, is like the, the, how Google does their whole. You know, they've got that that automatic yes. search. Uh, it, it basically yeah. get, tries to guess what, what you want to search. Yes. So you go, it lists the top 10 searches essentially. So you go, do South Africans, and all top 10 are need a visa for. And then, like, <laughs> a variance. <laughs> so, and so, so, I mean, there's, there's that. And then, um, is South Africa, and I've done this before, a country? Yes, it's a country. Safe? Well, <laughs> <laughs> debatable. Yeah, a third world country, dangerous. Well, we see a developing country, safe to visit, safe for travel, a democracy, <laughs> safe for it, Americans. You see, is what most people ask. <laughs> it's so expensive. Expensive. It shows you that. But the, is that actually a subjective view of it? Because a lot of people who will know won't ask that question. No, no, fair enough. But you must type. But do we some, know? But oh. t- how do I do? How do I this? And then there's some scary ones there. You know, like. No, I'm not even going to go there because it's... <laughs> there, there's some dodgy there's ones. There's some yeah. really, really dodgy <laughs> questions people are asking. But oh, yeah, it's cool. always fun. It's good for a laugh. If you hang out in Reddit enough, um, there's always some guy posting... Um, posting screenshots on, of... Screenshots on pics or something. Yeah. With a, with a, with a also, if you, if, uh, those things are now being personalized to you. Yeah, I've actually had to turn off because if you want, as a journalist, this is now an unfortunate thing, you want to yeah. get a sort of uh, objective... Uh, a view of things so I've actually told Google leave my search history alone yeah. it's actually quite sad because it means I don't get like, optimized the well, that's the results. point is do you actually then get what anybody else gets because you get the unoptimized and everybody else is getting the optimized you don't actually get no, but you'll gets. get the generic yeah it's for all the people using IE6 <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, poor people alright okay from that there's a new X prize that not new cool. it's been is around it? for a long time Oh, this one, the, the yes. one to the moon. This is the, what, why is this is news is they have now finalized the entries are closed and the 29 teams have been announced. Oh, okay. So unfortunately... This is, this is for like, boy, it's 2015. 2015, yeah. No, it's been running since almost the end of the previous, previous X Prize. So for at least the... I mean, I think it started in 2007, 6, 7, 8, around about there. So it has been running for a while, but um, they've now... Submissions are closed... Uh, the teams are announced. Do you want to just quickly go over what it is? Basically, what you got to do by 2015, you have to launch a moon rover of any sort you want to the moon. It has to land, drive 500 meters, and broadcast HD video back to Earth. Neat. And then there's a few other prizes as well. If you can drive, that gets you 30 million bucks. If you can do that first, you get 30 million bucks. Second person to do it gets five million and then there's some bonus prizes if you can drive instead of 500 meters you can drive five kilometers you get another million or five million or something and if you can survive the lunar night uh you Ooh. get another x number of million 
and there's a few other oh, other okay, bonus cool. prizes and there's a million dollar prizes for schools that are and all sorts of things yeah. Yeah. when when we're talking about the lunar night you basically just mean drive onto the dark side of the moon no 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 well, you've got to it's very cold you've got to survive new you've got to survive new moon so you can still say, I mean... Oh, okay, fair enough. Even though the face of the moon is always... It does get dark on that face. Yes, yes, yeah, yes, yes. So you've got to survive what's at two weeks or something. Yeah, which is pretty tough to do. Mm. The way I understand minus it... Minus several... Minus might, 100 and something degrees. I might be having a geography fail here. If it, when did we do this? We do this in geography. <laughs> whatever. Um, the, the moon rotates to face yes. the sun the whole time. So no, face Earth. No. We oh, always have the Earth. same okay. face of the moon it's facing us. It's tidally locked. Yes. And it's always the same face of the moon. All right. But remember, it does all with the Earth at 28 days. So yes, yes, at yes. some point, it, it does go so that the, it's the facing sun, the sun. Yes. And then we get that new moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fair enough. Okay, cool. I get it now. Okay. Cool. So right. it, you have to survive through that phase as well. Yeah. And then you get a couple of million bucks extra. But the entry costs was, I think it was $50,000 to enter. Yeah. And if you drop out, you don't get that back. And there was a few other things. This is a big project. Yeah. Um, yeah. 30 million bucks is not even going to cover your launch costs. It will, um, help. it will help. No. Not. No. This is big money, dude. <laughs> I'm telling you now, these, these, these guys are going to blow hundreds of millions okay. to do it. But it's interesting. There's actually quite a few um, some interesting projects. You must go look at the contestants. And there's an there's a open source one where they're going to be, it's a community thing. And that all the plans are going to be open source software. Within reason, I think they've got a, a little bit of issues with the US. I'm not 100% sure with disseminating rocket technology. So it depends. But um, some of the stuff is open. Uh, there's a bunch of Italians, which is like an Italian family. It's Italian and Swedes and the, anyway. Yeah. And it's 10 of them. They're going to be doing it. And there's a couple of other the quite interesting groups. Um, one group has already got... 2013, they've already booked space on a SpaceX uh, Falcon 9 launch to launch their, their vehicle. They're planning to succeed by 2013, so it's going to be an interesting thing. Um, Very cool. Check out their websites. The guys are releasing lots of videos and, and things like that. So if you're interested in that sort of stuff. Oh, we had a big discussion about it at the office today. So. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. The second last one. Uh, a car you can drive with your thoughts. Sounds scary. That okay. does sound scary, especially oh, well, actually, if when I fly into a road rage. Well, it's going to like sprout machine guns. <laughs> well, I'm sure you know I can get distracted e easily, and, and your thought process might just move, and then will the car realize you're not saying turn left, you just have thinking to be thinking left. left quickly. So this is a dumb idea. And, and well, I'm I mean, sorry. how many times have you driven someone in autopilot and you go, how "Have I got here?" Yes. I yes. mean, well, where they say where it's going to be quite cool is for paraplegics. So if you can get this in a car, you can build it into the wheelchairs. Okay. Okay, fair enough. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. All right. So but don't give it to a normal problem, human being, The problem please. is when the wheelchairs weigh two tons and do 120 k's an hour. True. That's where your problems yeah. start. No, I would, I, would, I would far rather trust a paraplegic than, than an able-bodied human being. Oh, yeah, I know. Because yeah. that, you know. And that's yeah. what they use all the time. Exactly. I mean, I think that their brains are just okay, capable. I'm not going to go there. I'm just going to keep quiet because it might offend people. <laughs> yeah. Turn us off quickly. <laughs> oh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you after. Tell us after. <laughs> Look, All it's right interesting. Then. I like that they're working on this stuff. It's, but it's, they've been... Why is this new again, man? This is old news. Toyota did this. Flipping four years ago. <laughs> huh? Yes, but did it succeed? That's the no, question. No, they had that crazy flipping wheelchair thing that <laughs> morphed shapes. So it would it would like lie flat when you wanted to go fast and then stand remember, upright, yeah. and that was my, that was mind controlled. Yeah, but like you, the you other thing is, are these things not ridiculously expensive? Look, I know there's nothing new oh, underneath yes. the sun, so I mean, no, also no, what, what they say with this one is it's not just how to drive the car. You can also give it, I want to go here. So they're, they're talking about that they'll, they'll merge just where the car will auto drive you. Dude, and you're, all I've got to say is it's way way easier because they've done this. This is not a new technology. I mean, you can buy the headset that you can play games yeah. with. I th to think I want to go there is probably a hell of a lot easier than actually making the car drive there. That's probably what they're doing is sort of that you what, think something and then it plots it into some sort of GPS. Yes. And that then is that that easy that Google was going at something for, like that. Because when you're thinking of where you want to go, there's so many more options. Dude, have you seen, Tim, to build a car to drive in traffic <laughs> on unstructured roads with no, just completely self-contained. 
That's very, very, I th- I think, very hard. Yeah, use. I think our first like real option for that is going to be like when we take to the Skyways <laughs> and I have th- and have proper beacons. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Or yeah. st- or, st- or or intelligent freeways. Yeah, where Which, you can structure the traffic flow in the freeway and things like that. Basically, remove all human control out of it. Yeah, but that's a really, I mean, that's a really advanced civilization. I know that's way far. We're not there yet. No, yeah. but I'm just It'll saying cool we are there because you'll get traffic will be quicker. I'm just saying is hopefully that's interesting and it's cool that people are working on it, but <laughs> it's not so. <laughs> but if we if we, if we watch iRobot, who cool. who we know is obviously a True. an authority that's, that's on these the things, that's the way the, the, yeah. the uh, human race is going to go. Hey? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then then you see what dangers automatic cars will have. Yeah. Of course, then there's Demolition Man, <laughs> exactly, yeah. which just has auto drive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus. No. Anyway, uh, Demolition Jan, Man. You wanted to complain about. MTN. Yes, I wanted to complain uh, about it. My complaint after this. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Now, basically, what this is about, and there'll be an article about this later. And uh, this way, I can also use this as a sort of a platform to to kind of explain that that yes, they pissed me off, but I also try to be fair in my judgment here. Yeah. Um, firstly, my SIM card packed up. All right. So I've got an MTN SIM in my in my pretty desire over here, right, and let me turn it on, and you'll check. No SIM card inserted. Yeah, except that there is a SIM card in here, and it's a pretty yellow MTN SIM card. All right, so I go to the MTN shop. I go, my SIM card's balked. I'm fairly sure my SIM card's balked because when I swap it with other SIMs, including international ones, it works just fine. I thought it was my device at first, and Googling the problem uh, seemed to reveal that this seemed to be a thing that happens on HTC Desires. Okay. So anyway, so but then it turned out it was a SIM. So I go back to the shop. I'm like, I need a new SIM. They're like, that'll be 129 Rand or whatever, please. Um, seriously? Seriously. No. Um, for a SIM swap. <laughs> and I'm like, no, there is no way I'm paying you for a new SIM. And then there's a whole history about them screwing me over when it comes to SIM cards as well. I'm not going to get into that because it's severely boring. But the, the bottom line is I'm like, no, hell no. So I, I call support today. Okay, first, I go back and I do my research because I'm like, I don't want to just climb into MTN, you know, if, if this is actually the lesser evil. So cool, 100, 100, I thought it was 130 or 140 bucks. Um, I call MTN support. They tell me, no, 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 it's 110 Rand. And then I get put through to a supervisor when I just wouldn't shut up. Mm-hmm. And they're like, no, that's XVAT. So they, they, on, on the support Ooh, line, they quote yo. me XVAT on everything. I'm like, listen, guy, How I'm a normal they? consumer. You're not you, allowed to. Yeah, it's exactly. Illegal. You can't quote me XVAT. Anyway, so then I start phoning around. So I phone Vodacom, uh, a Vodashop. And I'm like, listen, I'm a contract subscriber. My uh, SIM card is broken um, and I need to have it replaced. They're like, you know, sir, sorry, there, there is a limited warranty. But, you know, if you've had it for as long as you've had, that'll be 63 Rand. All right. Mm. So 63 Rand to have your broken SIM replaced on contract. I mean, it's, I'm giving them a month. It's I'm not like I'm a prepaid customer. Put it prepaid this customers have it easier than contract customers okay. do. You can crank out those bastard SIM cards for cents. They cost a buck at, at um, pick and pay or whatever. Yes, yeah, so if you're going to go buy a prepaid one. Come on. Yeah. And that's actually exactly that's what I did. BS. Because, because we went and said, migrate my number onto this. Yeah, that's exactly what I, well, what I did the first time. And they say, no, they can't do it this time around um, if I, you know, because it's an existing contract. When I, what I did when I got this contract was I bought a prepaid SIM um, because uh, getting a SIM on contract, they charge also like 100 bucks. But when I go and buy the SIM off the shelf prepaid, I'm like, I'm a prepaid customer. Please put me on contract. Now they go, surely, sir, we'll do it for you for free. Yeah. Anyway, so that's Vodacom. I'm like, okay, cool, sell C. So I do the big three, you know, one shot. Sell C, um, yes, sir, sorry, we can't do it for free. It'll cost you 29 Rand. I'm like, let me get this right. Two, nine. Yes. I'm like, that I can manage. So yes, that's they cool. charge that, that you for covers, the process. That covers the process. Exactly. And to make sure you're not screwing around sim. with the SIMs. That's cool. Yeah, and yeah. a buck for the sim. And so also it costs you something. So yes. like you don't do something stupid to the sim like, go, I need a micro sim. <laughs> Click and break it. There's uh, work, by the way. It works very well. <laughs> yeah. works great in the iPads. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, seriously, just take your pair of no, scissors. I, I believe it, it yeah. Anyway. And so for good measure, I, I called Virgin Mobile, and Virgin Mobile charges me 55 Rand, even though they're on sale CE. <laughs> <laughs> that charge me double the price that CellC does. So MTN charges you double the price that the nearest competitor does. And Cell C and blows everyone out of the water. Quadruple the price of I mean, Cell C. It's absolute madness. And it looks like I'm not going to be able to get around this. Like, I'm, I've bitched. I've went up to a supervisor. I'm going to try Twitter tomorrow. But it doesn't look... It looks like I'm going to have to shell out this money for a new SIM card to get my old number to work. Otherwise, and, I've and got this contract I can't use. the SIM card's died. How old is it? 
It's less than a year old. It's probably 10 months old now. What's the warranty on it? Three. Three months. Three months. Oh, best part. Best part. I talked to the supervisor. They're like, he, he drops his bombshell. He's like, if you took yellow SIM insurance, we would have done this for free. How much, How is, much is he? Three, uh, two Rand 50 X VAT. Three Rand a month on their website. Three Rand a month to insure your SIM card. I mean, this is Are they so sharky. <laughs> I mean, and, 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 and like. It's nearly as bad as Fiffin DSTV charging you for a 400 Rand decoder, charging you 20 bucks a month. Yeah, insure your, insure your SIM, please. I mean, that's... Are you smoking something? <laughs> I'm absolutely... You're on contract. You're paying them... A lot of money. A, a lot month. of money. And Give they me. just can't... And they just shaft you. No, it's incredible. It's incredible. I was, I was actually d- dumbstruck. All I, I couldn't believe that they were doing what this. What are you doing with the SIMs? It's not like you're selling them or hocking them on the corner. It's once you... Once you, if you, if or, you or flag me. You know, if, if I'm doing it every month. Yeah. Yeah. Fine. And cool. then, because it's on a specific contract, for goodness sake, you've you got my name. Details. You've got my address. You can come and ad- arrest me, you know. Ah. No, it's, um, but but uh, the comment I got from Vodacom on this was, you know, um, contract sims are a greater risk than, uh, than prepaid sims. Great. I, don't, what? I don't know why. Um, but, I mean, oh, so yes, case getting I'd, stolen. Yeah. So, provi- ask for my ID book, all the rest yes. of it. Which, I don't care. And deactivate the other SIM. They've all got unique numbers. Yeah. Deactivate the SIM. Exactly. So, no, but fair enough. Okay, so, I mean, I have to take it on face value. So, Mishri, what they're saying is that you're not going to walk in not as Jan from Yellen and say, give me a new SIM. Yes. Which, okay, let's say I did do that. I paid the 100 francs. And all the franchises I called actually said, oh, no, sorry, it was Virgin specifically warned me and said, if you come in for a SIM swap, please bring your ID book with you. Yeah. So, they're going to check your ID anyway. <laughs> no, it's unbelievable. Oh, it's oh, crazy. I couldn't oh, believe it. Oh, that's funny. Anyway. Well, let us know what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about that, we've actually got a drifter here with us. Yeah. Um, Stu, do you want to just pull up the iPad? Oh, yeah. Here we go. Uh, we showed you the drifter before, but we're just more... Uh, Stu will get the iPad going. I must say, uh, I got it for uh, Cecilia from Amava and... <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe you should type. <laughs> there we go. You type. Yeah, I don't Oh, by the way, there's a massive storm coming. Massive. Okay. Storm All right. So, so we're almost done. Yeah. The internet. Okay. The, everything's going to probably crap out any second. Okay. Uh, okay. So since we're talking about internet, I'm going to do my thing today. I'm. I'm. Not. I have an open web gold account. For some reason, since December, I'm not sure what's gone on. Uh, all of a sudden, from getting you know two megs during the day, I don't mind if we don't continually get it. I w- will not get above about 600k during the day. Okay. On a four meg line. On a four meg line. Paying this is the gold account for me gold. Pay it will and not. You're not doing anything funny. This is just straight so HTTP. Even if I'm speaking to the Ubuntu update services at o- IS. O- IS is, <laughs> I've worked out is IS one, and it, it did do this before. It worked perfectly. December something changed. I will not get but during the evenings just to make sure that I'm not get on a five twelve. You know they give me the wrong account. I will get up to three point five max. I've been thinking you know maybe we've we had a theory that maybe there's a problem here in centurion um that we're getting uh, yeah, changes, congestion or con- congestion whatever i thought maybe that's true i've just given up complaining about it but you know i got to the point now I've, since i'm paying this extra month i don't need to because i'm not getting the service let's try m you know because then yeah, i'm gonna get 12k during the day I can get mm. 12, 12K. and uncapped Unca- uncapped m uh shaped as well yes yeah, today got shaped. it turn of all of a sudden i'm getting two megs Bursting up to 3.5 megs. So it's not Centurion. It's not a problem, Centurion. So, MWeb, thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> you guys are better than the On open an web unkept, gold oversubscribed account. network. Yes. <laughs> paying, I'm paying less now. <laughs> and you're getting better speeds. I'm getting better speeds. Oh, wow. Well. So, and you're score. getting more cap. Um, or is the, are you talking about the, the uncapped the, both gold? Are the, both of them are uncapped. Uncapped gold service. Okay, yeah. cool. Uh, open web gold no no I have to get on cap we, with the streaming and all the files we upload yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not work on a cap to cap but we're going to keep on testing it so if 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 we have problems we will mention yeah um, okay this thing's not working uh, yeah it's the storm uh. cool um, it's, it's quite okay, we, oh, yeah, we've got the quite DSTV intense. the drifter it's actually pretty cool especially on the iPad works very nicely um, very happy with it and it's going to go to 30 rand a month in a month 35. or two months, 35 rand a month. Yeah. Uh, only complaint is on a PC, you work in a small window. You cannot maximize the window. Oh, interesting. And you I know the res is really low, though. It's like 320 Damn. by... Yeah, I was bad, watching the low. cricket on it. You battle to see the ball. 
oh, full wow. screen. So it's it's pretty bad. Yeah. Um, one thing is, did you solve the problem with the battery? No. We, so well, just we just need flat. to take it in. Oh, I've got a few problems with it. First of all, okay, you've got the battery problem that it discharges yeah. itself, and the stupid aerial. What? Freaking yeah. monkey designed that aerial. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's sort of it's an inverse. You know, normally on most aerials you have like the large bit at the bottom, and as you pull it out, so the bit that's most likely to break, the heavy bit is in the device. Yeah, other way around. This works the other way around. This, hey, the, just, show, just show you on this. Okay, so check at this thing. What? It looks like a sparkler. Yeah, but look, it's the wrong way around. The heavy bit is. Just hold it. Hold it up to the camera quickly. The heavy bit is now supported by the it's spindly more, bit. Yes. So that's just going to break. So the most likely bit to break is at the bottom. <laughs> you pay 600 bucks for this. Yeah. Yeah. I must say, look, our only problem with that version, but I think we've got a faulty version, we, we, we just haven't had time to take it in, is that it will auto dis- it discharges itself, so, even if you switched it off, yeah. But anyway, I think I would just laughed at the aerial. Okay. I thought it was quite funny. But for that, we're actually very happy with it. It works mm-hmm. nicely. Uh, you just make sure you're in a, an area that has uh, signal. But other than that, very happy e news, all the rest of it. For its price, it's great. Yeah, and and just to 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 add to that, um, they have announced um, Android, Android and, support. Uh, yeah, support. Um, some they and announced support for something else as well that right. I don't remember. Oh, Linux. Linux support. Yeah, I hope so. Uh, Linux. Uh, no, no, likely. Um, but but um, there's that, and they're going to be moving it. They they just said Nokia, but I think it's S60 devices, not yeah. It's going to be must Symbian, be Symbian, 3, 3. Symbian S60. It, yeah, S60. Yeah, so yeah. Okay. It, all the anyway. new all the new Nokia. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll support S60. Yes. Yeah, sure. Yeah. All right, um, cool. Yeah, so so they're going to do that, and there is talk of a BlackBerry app as well. I think. Okay, so, cool. It would be a text app. <laughs> <laughs> you saw Angry Birds the for Blackberry. Yeah. Black yeah, sure. <laughs> but you're alive. You're alive. Quite small. <laughs> cool. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. Then into our last uh, topic for tonight is before we get washed away. Dude, it's getting crazy outside there. <laughs> <laughs> hummingbird unmanned aircraft. This is just awesome. Okay. Yeah. It's very cool. It's basically that they've. It, it's a little bot that flies like a hummingbird. Yeah. So it's got wings that flaps at high it's speed. It's ornithopter. Eh? Proper flapping wing right. robot. Leonardo thing. da Vinci. No, it's and, and this one actually looks like a hummingbird. Have you got the video there? I have the video, and, and you can see it moving backwards and forwards as a controller. It's just really cool. Oh. And it can hover and move, and it can get up and down. It's Man, I wish, I wish. I want one. Why? This is all DARPA sponsored, eh? Um, yeah. Cool, just to end on something cool. Yes, it is All really, right. really nice. Cool. Uh, with that, we'll end on that because we are going to get washed, washed away. Washed away, yeah. <laughs> All right, we're going to say goodbye. Uh, thanks, Jan. Uh, Pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, you can get to him at My Broadband. Yeah, staff no. writer and his thing is... is <laughs> <laughs> Let's come and whine at staff writer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, uh, and also on Twitter at Exxel. Uh, thanks, Stuart. Cool, S- cool. Stu underscore ZA. Yes. And myself, Tim Hawk, at Tim underscore Hawk. Cool. Cool. Cheers, Cheers, everyone. Cheers. Bye.